thing you should know about closed positions, do you have less time or more time in a closed position? More. more time. Because if the position's open, flashy, fireworks, swashbuckling tactics, checkmate in three, open positions are very dangerous, tempo, time is everything. In a closed position, space is everything. Maneuverability, getting your pieces to their dream positions, you have time because things are locked down. So Capablanca's plan is to get his knight to b3. And how is he going to do that? Well, it's simple, my dear Watson. Knight to b8, knight to c6, knight to a5, and knight to b3. And if you're laughing, don't laugh, because that's exactly what he does. What else is he going to do? He needs to improve his pieces, and a pawn is a pawn. A pawn is very important, especially if he can withstand White's attack. As Darshan correctly points out, this pawn would be an outside pass pawn. And as Cole points out, it would be far away from the kings. So in any endgame scenario, it would be a winning advantage to have an outside pass pawn on the queen side. So let's see what happens now. Black plays knight to b8. Was it Black's turn? Just making sure here. Uh, yes, queen c2, knight b8. Rook a to e1. <coughs> he starts with the rook move. Knight to c6. You guys can call out the next move. What happens here? Okay. Call it out. Knight g3. Call out Black's move. Knight a5. Call out white's move. F3. F3. Call out black's move. Knight B. What you guys just did, you just calculated strategy, right? So it's not tactics where you're like queen takes h7, king takes queen, knight to f6, double check, followed by rook h1, mate. It's not tactics. These moves were not forced. But by understanding the pawn structure and understanding the piece placement, that helped you to know the next four or five moves in a row. And you called them out perfectly simply by understanding the strategic nature of the position. So you see, chess is not only about brute force calculation. It's about understanding the pawn structure, what side of the board you should play on, and where your pieces should be placed. Question? Isn't the, the rook on e1 supposed to be on a1? No, he moved it to e1 earlier. But if it was on a1 right now, it would have had to move there anyway. So now, incredibly, or not incredibly, actually it's very logical, both sides reach the culmination of their strategy at exactly the same time. The pinnacle of white strategy and the pinnacle of black strategy. White plays, is it white's turn now? I think it is, sorry, I keep losing my place. Yes, it is white's turn. White plays what? E4. E4. And white finally gets his long-awaited breakthrough in the center. And black plays what? Queen takes A4. Queen takes A4. Black wins his pawn. And now the question is, whose plan was more effective? White's central breakthrough, or Black's materialistic plan of winning an isolated pawn? Well, don't raise your hand. You know that White's plan is more effective, because I already told you that White wins this game. But yes, White's plan is more effective here, but we need to see why. Who has a suggestion for what White should do right now? Remember, the breakthrough was not aimed at just stopping there. There was a plan behind it. We are going to keep exchanging, or keep climbing the ladder of imbalances. Keep climbing the ladder of advantages. You have a small advantage, you trade it for a slightly bigger one, and then a slightly bigger one. It's like a good business negotiation. You want to make sure you're getting the better deal. So now we've won the battle for the center. We're going to trade that for a kingside attack. But how? What is the move? Yes? E5. E5 is right. E5, chasing away the knight, which is black's only good defender on the king side. And in fact, that knight has no safe squares besides this one. Very passive square, can't go here, can't go here, can't go here, can't go here. Basically all it can do from there is two more retreating moves. So we have pacified that knight. And now, the next move, if you guys guess the move that I'm thinking of right now, which is not the move that he played, you'll be guessing the right strategy, but, but it fails because of a tactic. So again, sometimes you have the right long-term goal, but never stop calculating. Never stop looking at specific variations. Who thinks they know the move here for white? Cole. That is exactly what white will do on the next move. But he's not going to do it yet. But you're absolutely right, Cole. This is what he wants to do. Why? Because we have the rook behind it. We've talked about our pawns pointing towards the king side. So charge. Onward, men. F4, F5, F6. And if you achieve that and force this pawn to take you or to advance, what color squares are like Swiss cheese around the king? What color? White or black? black? The dark squares. And who has a dark squared bishop? White. Quote unquote dark squared bishop. More of an overgrown pawn. 
But white has a dark squared bishop. Black is the one who struggles on the dark squares because their pawns are controlling light squares. So when we weaken black on the dark squares, that will maximize our favorable imbalances.